Well, hi there, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, all the ships at sea. And children of all ages. <laughs> what an intro. Oh, I Slumber know. Slumber party. Slumber party. I uh -huh. knew I was a little sleepy today. Yeah, for some well, reason. we could all tell. <laughs> you look like you've been in bed. From here down, I have my Dr. Denton's on. Oh, and they're so cute. And my trap door was open a few minutes ago. I knew I was picking up a breeze from somewhere. But anyway, I'm going to do something that's kind of interesting called Southern Fast Track Chicken. Oh, my goodness. Who sent this one in? Oh, this was sent in by the lovely <coughs> and semi-voluptuous <coughs> Sue Bisher of Macon, Georgia. Georgia. And i got to tell you, that I've never done a, a chicken dish where you used a, 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 a cooking bag. Mm -hmm. And uh, this thing, I cooked one up, it's in there right now, recook it, and it smells wonderful. I think this could be a good recipe. I believe that uh, Sue... You've sent a good one. We'll find out after a while. Well, some somebody named Dennis from Parts Unknown sent this recipe that I'm going to do to us. No last name, no return address, uh -oh. and no name for it. But it's a breakfast casserole kind of thing with sausage and eggs. And I'm going to start frying up a oh, pound and a from. half of uh, it's sausage. I know who it's from. Who? It's from my friend Dennis Rowland out in California. Oh. Just ask, and I would have oh, told you. Well, good. Well, well, in fact, I had this at his very home. Oh, well, good. One well, day. It was I, fabulous. I hope it turns out all right because Dennis, we know who you are and where you are now, <laughs> and you could be in some deep uh, well, Laban, problems. Well, Laban, <laughs> I hate to tell you, but I have had it, and it was wonderful. Oh, that doesn't make any difference. So that, that puts was in the California. Onus on you. No, that was in California. You know how things go in California. No, that was in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Well, I thought you said he was in California. That's where he is now. When oh. I had him, he was in Harrisonburg, Virginia. It was so bad he had to leave town. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be offended if I... No, you go right on because, you know, I mean, how much do you have to know to fry a pound and a half of sausage? I have to, to wash my chicken. Oh, yes. It's Can you filthy say that on corrupt. television? I'm gonna, I have some boneless chicken breasts, and I'm going to wash them because the wash lady will get upset, the one that got real huffy about the fact that we threw the, and I'm going to wash them. Uh -huh. So I'll be back in a minute. It's and, all yours. Well, oh, thank you so much. Well, as you fry this sausage up or down, you need to break it up as it goes so that it'll be in little pieces when you get through. And this is the cheapest sausage I could find at the store. And incidentally, this is not a recipe for those of you like moi with problems de heart. Mm -mm. This is instant cholesterol death, this recipe. <laughs> so I just want to tell you up front that this is not a healthy recipe. But then some of you don't care. You'd commit suicide. Doesn't but, bother me. But I mean, well, there are a lot of people that don't have coronary artery disease that I can have this a, without any trouble. I just had a treadmill test a few weeks ago, and I, I'm good for about six more of these kind of recipes. Oh, they well, tell good. me to hold out for another half a season before I have the big one. Uh -huh. uh, I have taken these chicken breasts, and I have washed them, and I put them in this, and now I'm going to take just some plain old off-the-shelf zesty Italian, in fact, I have some reduced calorie dressing, uh, and I'm going to put that over top of it. You know, it would seem to me like, although it does not say that you should do this, it would seem it would be a good idea if you just uh, stick this chicken in it and, and just marinate it for a yeah, while. Yeah, just in there. stick the chicken in it. So that's what I'm going to do. Well, you remember we did bit. that uh, recipe from Doug Perlman where we uh, marinated the uh, chicken in uh, Italian dressing. Don't and barbecued remember that. It. But you remember we barbecued it in my backyard. Huh. Now, the next thing I've got to do is I've got these pole beans that I went out back of the studio here and picked a little bit earlier this afternoon, right off the pole. And you know what you have to do with those? For those of you too ignorant to know that these don't come in cans, what you have to do, this is what they look like in their natural state. And you, you pluck the ends off of them and then you snap them in half. And I'm going to do about a pound of those, a, a half a pound, pardon me. Just take them and click, click, snap, snap, and you got it. Now, so I'm going to be a little while doing this. Back to Mr. Johnson. Well, while our sausage is frying, we've got seven slices of bread, just plain old white bread, and it has to be cubed. So I'm going to cube it, cut it each slice in four pieces that way, and then turn it this way and cut it in four, and you got it cubed. And you put it over in a bowl, and while you're doing this, you melt half a stick 
a margarine. I suppose you could use butter this time since you got all the other stuff in here, but I'm using margarine because that's what I had. And you want to cube all seven slices of white bread. I guess you health food fanatics out there could use whole wheat or something, but again, I don't think it would make any difference on this one. You know, we were laughing a minute ago about how people don't really know what things look like in their natural state. And I will tell you that I saw a TV show the other night where some folks were just drawing pictures of things to, for psychological tests on some one of those high tone shows like they have on public television. You know, the kinds of real boring shows. But anyway, um, <laughs> just joking. I, I love public TV. Um, I, I love it. I, I really do. I have to. I'm on it. So anyway, uh, but a lady drew a picture of corn, and the corn was growing directly out of the ground. It was not growing on stalks. The the little corn was coming directly. Like pineapples. And you know, yeah, and I was <laughs> like little pineapples. I really kind of get worried when I see something like that. I don't know where she is today, but... I know where I am, right here on public television. So well, I'm still doing these pole beans. Well, I've got all my bread now is cubed, and it's in this bowl. And as soon as your margarine is melted, and this is melted, let me turn off the. How do you turn this thing off? There we go. You pour the margarine over this bread, just like it's popcorn. That thing is still on. Oh, well. There it is. It's off. <laughs> and I, uh, this, isn't this exciting? You're shelling the beans, and I'm... Now, you got to keep this sausage stirred up here. Let me stir it some more. Oh, man. And now I've got a great a half a pound of cheddar cheese, and I'm using a sharp cheddar because I like sharp better than I do mild. As do I. And so here's my, i grate this baby Boy, up. this is a slumber party. Well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, I mean, you know, the well, you sparkling do. repartee, you gotta do what you gotta do. There are certain things in the kitchen. Let me ask you this, are you always funny in your kitchen? Well, I some people think so. <laughs> And I'm even more hilarious in other rooms. Uh, I've heard that too. But anyway, just going along here, the chicken is just marinating and the pole beans is pulling. And the and viewers the are insulting. Chickens are chicken and the viewers are revolting, but then they always were. Oh, me. So anyway, we're just continuing on. I, you know, I don't use uh, baking bags very often, do you? No, I don't. It's something I just I don't used to use them doing. a lot, and they were real handy and everything, but... But what happened? Did they become unhandy? No, I just... I don't know. Did you I, have one turn on you? What? No, I just didn't buy them anymore. I don't know why. Just stopped buying them. I mean, they, I, they always seemed like they were a good recipe. I mean, mm -hmm. a good idea. Yeah. And, yeah. A product well worth having in your larder or in your pantry or whatever you want to call it. Oh man, well, great, just a little bit more. Well, color. I've had it with this bean string, and you know, I did a lot of this when I was a kid on the farm. Oh no, it. not again! <laughs> Please don't make us hear I all did, those I stories. I really did, and I hated it. And when you'd get to the last picking of the season, you know what you'd have to do then? You'd have to go out and pull all the stalks up and bring them in on the porch and pull the stuff off. I hated that. Ooh. It was awful. Let's stir this sausage around a little bit. Now, over here in a bowl, I've got three eggs Ooh. broken up. Thank heavens. And they're just all broken up and crying. I and noticed they're already right broken up. <laughs> uh -huh. Just totally put out. Now, you need to let this sausage cook pretty good, but it is going to bake for over a half an hour, so you don't have to fry it until it's golden brown. Now I'm going to take two onions and I'm just going to quarter them. Uh, take the little outside off because that's real rough to eat. And uh, I'm going to quarter two of them because they're going to go into this little bag Oh goodness. So I'm going to start that little process right now and that's about all I'm going to be doing for a bit. We have the Cook Sisters will be by a little, little while. Not okay. just yet. Not, yep. Don't get excited. Here are my 
three eggs, whole eggs, in my bowl here, and I'm gonna whip them for who laid the rail. Oh, my whisk. what's wrong? I have gotten a low down, oh, nasty, a bad rude, onion over there, terribly rotten. Only other one that I have onion. <laughs> one onion quartered in this recipe. Oh, I should that always terrible? know to bring along an extra onion. I don't know why, I just never think of it. But I didn't. Go ahead, lady. Well, you know, we used to have a bag of them hanging there, but they kept growing green. <laughs> All right, now, to these three eggs that have been whipped, I'm going to add one cup and one half of milk. Vitamin D, whole milk. And stir, whip them up real good. Boy, you're right, this does take a lot of dishes. Uh-huh. Bowls, pans. Somebody's gonna have to wash forever today. I don't know, who's, whose turn is it today? No one's admitting to oh, it. Oh, nobody wants to admit. <laughs> well now, Larry, I'm gonna start uh, assembling this thing here. Well, take your time. Now, you need a nine by nine, Dennis says, a nine by nine pan. I don't have one, I don't know who does. Oh, Laban, but Dennis was always real haughty about that particular point. Well, tough nuggets. Anyway, uh, I'm putting three quarters of the bread over into a pan I bought at the stove. And you just shake it out in here and diddle it around. Break up your cubes and... Look like right big cubes. Well, I mean, what do you want? Little teeny ones? Right on! Hey, that stuff is jumping. Well, if you want to know, yes. The meat is jumping. The sausage jumping. Sure is hot. Look at that. While he's singing, uh, I'm going to take some potatoes now, and I'm going to. You're supposed to use. You're supposed to use six small to medium new potatoes. Now, I couldn't find any yesterday, so I'm just going to use some regular potatoes. But I am going to quarter them also. And that's all I'm going to do for right now. Well, you know, we're having so much trouble with produce. We're not in one of the big urban areas where they've got just millions of, of people coming in and with uh, fresh vegetables day by day, you know, on an annual basis. We don't have that here. And so I'm amazed Larry found the beans. They did have pole beans. I was surprised. And I had my own potatoes. Dug them up myself last summer. So these are my potatoes. Did you really? I, yeah, that's true. I didn't have to depend where, on anybody where did you for dig my them potatoes. Up from? from my business partner's land. Oh. Do you want to know the exact location? You want me to produce yeah. a map? Uh huh. And that's that. I know where it is. Where the blackberry mm -hmm. patch. That's right is. down the blackberry patch. Mm -hmm. So that's where I got All from. Right, here we go. But um, but um, but um. And also, by the way, while things are a little dull here at our slumber party, well, I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this little uh, thing of. Uh, Clove. Uh, no, it's not a clove. Do you know what you say it is? A clove of garland, garland. squashed. Oh, that's why it says garland squashed. But that is a clove. And you may want to insert that clove. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. I was only kidding. Don't get haughty. I was only kidding. I'm going to no, put that in there in anticipation of squishing it a little later on. Uh huh. Oh, you're not going to pre-squish it, huh? <laughs> I just wanted to do something. I thought, oh, so, you know, okay. you're still diddling around well, the sausage. Well, I mean, it takes you a while I know, to fry that's this true. sausage. That is true. Until it's done. That is true. You don't want anybody dying a piece of bad sausage. That's right. That's true. And it's going to be done. Now, if we wanted to and had a great big pan, we could make a bodacious pan full of sausage gravy. gravy. Ooh. Anyway. But we won't. <laughs> I think you do you have to we're be. we're from the south. <laughs> I was going to say, I think you do have to be a true southerner to really appreciate how excited we all were about that one remark. I just love, I'll run up gravy any day of the week out of anything. It's incredible. Well, Lord, that Pasta looks like a gravy piece of bone. I have to. Oof. Anyway, well, while we're waiting for that uh, to uh, sort of cook up before I start assembling mine, perhaps we ought to have our visit from the oh, yes. Cook sisters. The delightful you know, old girls. They're and always. They, they were talking about using what they had today to take you out behind the barn with. <laughs> They'd never do that. Oh, yes, they would. Although I do think they have a paddle of and some kind. And you deserve it, as I recall. Oh, Sess. Ah, ah, I, oh, I think a hummingbird's flown in there. 
No, no, it's oh, just a big it. old moth. Whew. Well, yeah, I guess you're right. Moth, hey! Moth eating. I brought another toy along out onto the porch. Oh, that looks dangerous. Guess I... what this is. Open your mouth. Ah, uh, no, no, no. It reminds me of that big thing Dr. Rucker used to use on us. No, no, that's not it. No, what is it? Well, it's it's a butter paddle. Oh, no, it isn't. What is it? No, no, no. It, it, it's that paddle the principal had over to school to use on Baby Ray, the school midget. Oh, no, they never used that on the... I'll swear I knew she'd bring up that midget just because I went with him. Listen, let me tell you, this is a butter paddle. Oh. You know, when they get the butter all close to being ready, they smack it into submission with this to get all oh. the liquids out of it and put the salt in I it. I see. I thought it referred to being the location it was used on you. I'm Sister Cook. And I'm Tootsie Cook. And, and we're, we're the, the Cook, Cook Sisters. sisters. <laughs> Oh, amazing. Well, I want to start taking off my sausage here. Take off your sausage. And you want to let it drain so all the natural juices are pouring out here. And then you just sprinkle it over your bread cubes. <laughs> what are you laughing about? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, you know it is funny. Uh, it is a good recipe. I will tell you that, but it seems to be like an awful lot of trouble. Could you fix this ahead of time and put it in your refrigerator? I don't think so. Bring it out. And, I don't huh? think it would be you, good. You well, you'd have to get up 4 o'clock in the morning and serve anybody this no, dish. No, I mean, you can do it in a half an hour. I noticed the dentist was right. <laughs> he was <laughs> worn out. tired by the time I got to breakfast. He was serving a whole bunch of people that day. That's all right. Mm -hmm. Dennis, by the way, is indeed watching this show for the first time out in California, so I hope you see your recipe, and I hope you don't sue us. Well, who cares? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Go ahead and run right. up some no, gravy. I am. I'm, I'm going to. <laughs> I'm we going need to some dump gravy. out some, some of this grease here. Oh, no, not in that. Plastic. Oh my gosh. No, it isn't. No, it'll be all right. I dumped it in the styrofoam. All right, now where's the flour? Let me just put a little flour over in here. And you need to let this flour cook up here a little bit. I need some tongs or something. You got any tongs? <clears throat> Now, while this flour is cooking, now we come back over here to the casserole, and after you have uh, put all your sausage in there, now you want to sprinkle your cheese over your sausage. If this is good, I know what I'm going to do with this next year. I'm going to serve this at one of those Christmas things that I have to do for my job. Mm -hmm. When I've You'll got, be frying the sausage for two weeks. Uh-huh. When I've got thousands of people there working for me. There we go. All right, now. We bring our egg and milk mixture, and <laughs> we're going to pour it over everything. Oh, boy. Mm -mm -mm. And you're going to bake it in a 350-degree oven for, 35 min or for 18 minutes. Then you take it out and you put the remainder of the bread cubes on it and then you bake it for another 18 minutes and it's done. That's it, huh? That's it. Okay, time to assemble this thing. Now you got your cooking bag and it calls for a large cooking bag. And we've had our chicken breasts in here sort of marinating around in this Italian dressing. I tell you, this is really, it smells like a delightful recipe. So you put those in there. And I have never found a way to put this stuff in these bags without getting it all over you. Not much you can do about it. Just sort of put them in there. It calls for four. This looks like more like three. I don't know what happened. Well, a chicken head. Well, never mind. But anyway, now you put that in there. And now I've got my pole beans, about a half pound. And you just delicately put those in there. They're going to cook. This is a one pot meal or a one bag meal as the case may be as opposed to a two bagger that well that's another joke but anyway <laughs> now <laughs> big clove of garlic and we're going to take that and squish that right around in there oh boy let me get a knife and get that off of there Woo, boy i want to tell you when this starts cooking mm, is that nice and we take our potatoes 
and we put them in there. A little salt and pepper on that chicken. I forgot to do that, but it's all right. It'll be all right. You've had too much salt and pepper anyway today. I can just tell. And then you take your your quarters of of your onion and you put that in there also. Now I don't believe that there's anything that I haven't put in there. The pole beans, the onions, the potatoes, the garlic, and the, of course the Italian dress. And then all you do is just take that and, and just, you know, fold it all up and put the thing on it, put a little slit in the top of it so it does not explode and blow you into next week. Do you do that when you use a cooking bag? Put a little one right there. They also tell you, the instructions on the bag are, you're supposed to put a little bit of, uh, a little bit of wow. flour in there. Oh. They say about a tablespoon of flour. That's what the, the, the people that make these bags call for. But it worried me a little because the recipe doesn't call for flour. So what if you don't want flour in it? So I don't know. We'll just stick a hole in it and hope it doesn't explode. Well, Larry, Put it in the oven at uh, 350 degrees for 45 minutes to an hour, and it will be delightful. You will just love it. And mine's ready to come out momentarily. Well, and here is the sausage gravy. And I, it's made up, and it's just a real nice consistency. And I think I'll put it over on the table, and we can put it on our dishes if they don't turn out. <laughs> Let's see the recipes. Oh, yeah, we better. Well, the Mystery no... recipe yeah. from somebody named Dennis. Half pound grated sharp cheddar, two and a half cups of sausage. That's also the same as a pound and a half. Seven slices of white bread, cubed, three eggs, one and a half cups of milk, quarter cup of margarine melted. And that's it. That's a mighty short recipe for as long as it took. Southern fast track chicken sent in by Sue Bisha of Megan Jotwaja. Four chicken breasts, skin removed, half a pound of pole beans, one to two medium onions. Oh, well, it says one to two. No, but it. Five to six small, medium, new potatoes, if you can find them, and if you got them, a clove of garlic squashed, an Italian dressing for on the chicken, put it in the oven at 350 degrees, and mwah, it shall be good. I'm going to take mine out in just a second here. I think it's a good recipe. I really do. Well, I think uh, the, Ms. Witch needs to get in here, too. Mm -hmm. Wow. Where is she? Well, bring her on in. She's here. Or something. Well, here she is. Oh. There we go. I'll let you read that while I take this out. Dear of men, if you can't read this, it's because we can't see to write. The lights are out. Uh -oh. What can you cook when the lights are out? Uh -oh. And it's from Charles L. Watt of Menlo Park, New Jersey. Excuse me. Well, make enough noise there, why don't you? Good grief. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Prominently. Well, I'm going over here and sit down. Well, go ahead and I'm eat. Ready. I don't care. Just Maybe get I on out of here. All right. I figure I could waste another two minutes getting this stuff out of the bag. Well, I want to have enough time to eat. Here it is. Woo, it's steamy hot. I'm just going to rip it open because I can't wait. And I'm just going to take some of this lovely chicken, and lovely beans, and potatoes, and it's not coming out. I, yeah, I was going to say, I think it'd be easier to just pick the bag up and dump it all out. I hate to be too indelicate about it, though, because, you know, delicacy is everything. Ooh, it smells good, though. It really does, even if you can't get it out. I think the platter is a little large, don't you, ladies and gentlemen? Mm -hmm. uh, it is a right large platter. <laughs> I can't get anything out of here. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, this is so good over here. I just wish I could tell you. Mm, He's going on and eating mm. without me. I knew he would. Oh, well, it's this real is pretty. Delicious. If I could just get it out, ladies and gentlemen, it would be real nice. I got one minute to get it out. I'm going to get it out. <laughs> oh, isn't that pretty? <laughs> I believe that's why I quit using the cooking bag. I, <laughs> I, I think I just found out why you don't use these things. It's hard to get this stuff out. Here, I have some chicken and beans and potatoes and uh, this mm. and that and the other. Oh, it just looks so pretty. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank mm, you. This looks like a right substantial meal, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we it's supposed here. to be for a lot of people, you know, before you go to bed so you'll sleep good and not mess that's around. Right. Let me it. try some of this mm -hmm. sausage mess. Not as good as Dennis's. 
I'm, I was prepared for it, folks. <laughs> I knew he was going to say something rude. What do you mean, wiggle it or... <laughs> Bye. <laughs>